In a previous life, I was a mountain biking instructor for the Boy Scouts. I am a really big fan of the recent initiatives around Southern California trying to support alternative methods of locomotion and commuting. Now, obviously there's a lot of controversy still happening about things like these little electronic scooters, but we're seeing in a lot of neighborhoods this great improvement, these, these new uh, roadways being built just for cyclists. I'm down here in Santa Monica. This is one of the cities that's really leading the charge on making this neighborhood and this city a little bit more bike and commuter friendly. I'm here at this trendy workspace called Cross Campus to meet up with the, uh, the PR team, the social media team for Fuel. They manufacture, they just finished an Indiegogo campaign raising over a million dollars. What they think is gonna be one of the best e-bikes, a motor assisted bicycle, dual battery swappable system up to 28 miles an hour uh, top speed and a range of up to 125 miles. I'm gonna check out this really cool awesome colorful building here and then I'm gonna jump on one of these bikes and ride it around town. I can't wait to see what this thing can do. We might have a little traffic noise right here. There's a train actually about to drive by, which is pretty awesome. Now the people behind Fuel, the, the designers, the engineers, the entrepreneurs, they've got a lot of pedigree for cool electronic devices and road worthy vehicles. But Santa Monica is kind of a genius place to spearhead a product launch like this. Now this town has been at the forefront. They've been the tip of the spear in this uh, debate on things like e-scooters. There's a well-rounded ecosystem of ways to get around while the whole, the whole community here is still really pedestrian friendly. But that's enough yapping from me. Let's get out there and ride. Okay, first thoughts on riding this awesome fuel e-bike. I Immediately, I am way out of practice in road bike riding. I, even just looking up what the laws were in Santa Monica, I had to get around and uh, was very unfamiliar with their pathway for things like bike lanes. So I felt like I was always in the way of traffic. Second immediate thought in firing this up, I've recorded, at this point right now, I've recorded about an hour, maybe an hour and a half of riding footage. And almost none of it's really usable because I do not have the right mount to clip to this bike's handlebars. Okay, enough of the wacky stuff. Onto the bike itself. I was expecting a slightly steeper, just a slightly higher learning curve than any of those e-scooters you've seen zipping around town. You know, you, with one of those, you step on it, you kind of push with your feet a little bit. And then the big fear is getting used to stopping. Here, the mechanics are what slow you down just a minute. Um, if you're familiar with you know, road bikes or mountain bikes, obviously like shifters and stuff, you're gonna get on, on up to speed on that very quickly. It's that throttle control for the actual electronic portion of this that you're now having to think with your left hand and your right hand independently for how fast you wanna travel. It took me a little bit longer to get up to speed than I think an e-scooter would, but once I did, I felt like I had way more control over the riding and driving experience. You know, being able to uh, gear up on the actual bicycle, being able to throttle up on the e-bike, being able to pull all that stuff back, that felt really solid, that felt really smooth. For me not being as familiar riding around in traffic, it was nice that that tactile experience, I really wasn't looking at the little control screen that often because I was trying to scan around, see what was going on with the cars around me. So just the feel on that worked really, really well. That's the main takeaway for me, the big positive on this. Slightly different style of commuting, of riding. You're still getting a little exercise. You're still getting some fresh air. You can throttle up really, really quickly if you wanna try and match residential traffic. You can back it way off and just pedal on a slightly heavier bike. Stuff like this that makes me really excited about alternative commuting, especially out here, you know, in a, in a, a place like Santa Monica that they're, they're ahead of the curve for supporting this kind of infrastructure. I've only ever been on one other battery assisted bike and it was one of those foldable frame jobs. So it, it added, it contributed to your pedaling. It just didn't quite have the same kind of power or responsiveness that this fuel prototype has. Or I actually kind of got myself into trouble 
at a, at a red light. I, I had remembered to gear down on the bicycle so I could hop off and I had my one pedal ready. I could jump back on once the light turned, but I had forgotten to turn down the, uh, the motor assist. And so the light turns green, I hop on the bike, I get about one cycle through and that <laughs> battery, the motor kicks in and boom, I go through that intersection pretty quick. Again, that's a good thing. You you want to have that feel for it. You need to be comfortable with it. But it took me a little bit by surprise. I was only about 15 minutes into this first ride. And uh, I, I'm glad that I didn't do something dumber than that to get myself into trouble. That, and I'm always stoked for any excuse to come down here to uh, Santa Monica, soak up some sun. Uh, I think I'm going to spend a little time here around the pier go grab myself some kind of soft serve or something like that. And then uh, I got to trek back over to the, uh, to the fuel offices so I can give this bike back. I'm gonna be real sad to give this bike back. That's the end of the ride. That's all she wrote. Pedaled it back here to the little loading area outside the fuel offices. Lovely day, a gorgeous way to spend morning, part of the early afternoon. But I took this bike out roughly, I'm at around three hours now. Obviously, I'm only scratching the surface on what this bike could do. One of the last little cool techie bits before we wrap this video up proper is the dual battery system that Fuel's gonna be using on the fluid is pretty trick. Two separate battery uh, units, and then you'd be able to pop one out if you had an extended run situation, like you, you wanted to go even further than what the bike could already do. But at some point, I kind of feel like the, bi the bike is starting to mock me a little. Because even for knowing that this bike has crazy range, I took it out there. I, I was riding around for three hours and it doesn't even show, <laughs> it doesn't show any drop in, in battery charge. Like I didn't even hit 1% of the bike's capabilities. Uh, it's pretty rare. It's really rare that I get to use something like this, especially in the prototype stage, which seems to have no problems mocking me. The, I feel like the bike is laughing at me. I'm really not cool enough to be hanging out in one of these shared open workspaces. I keep getting the stink eye from people that are uh, taking important calls and making the big deals on their phone while I'm outside trying to shoot this stuff. It's pretty hilarious. That's gonna do it for me down here at Cross Campus in Santa Monica. I had a blast. This was a, this was a great uh, excursion for me getting to have work outside. I'm gonna leave some more info on the Fuel Fluid if you'd like to check out where their Indiegogo campaign went, their current production schedule, when they'll be shipping some of these awesome bikes. Again, that, that range just blew me away. I was very impressed by how far I could go on that e-bike. So folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just getting to nerd out on some fun, cool, new, gadgety, techie things, we want to see if we can expand that conversation and talk about other alternative methods of transportation and things that will benefit your community uh, wherever your community might stand on the topic of e-bikes, e-scooters, and pedestrian traffic. If you'd like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links down below this video where you can uh, click on some of those cool things, or you could consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen right now. That's an awesome community of fun, uh, like-minded tech pals, a huge resource for me as I'm planning future content, so I hope to check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebook and the Instagram, and I will catch you all on the next video.